by his own strength or wit to defend himself from destruction without the help of Confederates, where everyone expects the same defense by the Confederation that anyone else does. And therefore, he which declares he thinks it reason to deceive those he can help, that, sorry, that can help him, can in reason expect no other means of safety than what can he can he, than what can be had from his own single power. So Hobbes is reminding us here that the costs of losing the commonwealth, the cost of lost security, are extremely high. So we're asking here about the rationality of non-compliance with covenants, the rationality of acting as if the third law of nature is not, in fact, a law of nature. And Hobbes' claim here is that if, well, put it this way, if you get found out, if other people recognize that you are not complying with your agreements, if other people recognize that you don't see any reason to comply with an agreement except that you happen to desire it, well, people are not going to cooperate with you. People are not going to trust you. Basically, you will be excluded from participation in the commonwealth. And the costs here are very, very high. If you're excluded from participation in the commonwealth, you are, in effect, back in a state of nature where you can promote your goals and preserve yourself only based on your own strength, only based on your own physical ability. Okay, so two replies, two points he's making. First is that, maybe I should say again, um, so what we're addressing here is somebody like the fool who says you should make whatever covenants you like, but then decide whether to comply with them based on, well, whether you think you can get away with it or not. Whether you can get away with violating the covenant. So if other people, I mean, so the fool. The fool is no fool. The fool would say, of course, if people are going to find me out, catch me breaking the covenant, and punish me severely for violating the covenant, well, that's not in my self-interest. I'm only going to violate the covenant when I think I can get away with it. When I can disguise from other people, maybe my intention, or the fact that I've actually violated this agreement, and I can get away with it, uh, and um, and therefore not suffer the negative consequences in terms of satisfying my desires from being punished. Is that clear? Okay, so Hobbes' reply now is, look, you can never be so sure that you're going to get away with it. And even if you can on an occasion, well, based on dumb luck, that doesn't make it a rational policy in anticipation. And second, don't forget that the costs of getting caught here are extremely high. And then he says one more thing. Right, costs of uh, uh, losing the commonwealth are extremely high. And then he says over on um, 93, paragraph 10, he says, the names of just and unjust, when they are attributed to men, signify one thing, and when they are attributed to actions, Another. Um, so justice, the virtue of justice, is a virtue, he's saying here, of persons, not only of actions. So we can say, I mean, we already did say, that when somebody acts to violate a covenant, that action is unjust. But now Hobbes is saying we can also judge or evaluate not just individual actions to be just or unjust, but people to be just or unjust. And he doesn't 
exactly say how to do this, but the answer has got to be something about the character of the person, whether the person tends to comply with uh, governance or not. Maybe the way the person deliberates about whether to keep a government. So we could say that a person is a just person when they accept the third law of nature. They're an unjust person if they reject it. So the fool is an unjust person. The fool would be happy to accept that label, of course. The fool's question is precisely whether this is a law of nature. Okay, so, right, and that's it. So those are the points that Hobbes makes in reply. Um, and it's, as I said before, it's not entirely clear maybe how these fit together or whether this is a successful reply. Um, but I think one way to think about it is this. Hobbes' point is this, that um, in, in these kinds of situations, in the situations where we've made a covenant, and now it's time to decide whether to comply or not. And in the situation where we have a desire to violate the covenant, uh, where we have a desire to, to not comply, this is going to be a kind of tough decision. Right? But if our desires are to do what the covenant says, there's no question. That doing what the covenant requires of us is good, we have a desire for it, and we'll do it. There's no, there's no problem. The problem is going to be when we have a desire, when we have an aversion to do what it is that the covenant now requires. Because that will appear to us to be what? Bad. The third law of nature says even if you have an aversion to doing that thing, it's rational for you to do it. And that's what the challenge is. We all right? Okay. So I think that putting these different considerations together, we might get a picture of something like this. In these situations where we've made a covenant, where our desire that we have at the moment is contrary to it, and we're deliberating about whether to comply or not, we're tempted not to, we, human beings, are liable to make mistakes. We human beings are liable to make an incorrect calculation of our own self-interest. And in fact, we're liable to make an incorrect calculation that will have very, very high costs Specifically, in those situations where we know that we are liable to make a mistake, we should not rely on the judgment that we make in that particular instance. Okay? So the picture is something like this. Um, Human beings are often tempted by the desires that they happen to feel right then. And in these kinds of cases, it's easy to imagine ourselves getting away with it, breaking the covenant and not being found out. And it is, of course, possible that we will break the covenant and not be found out. It is possible. But that's going to be a case of dumb luck. That's not something that we can really count on and anticipate. And yet, we're liable to, on the basis of our passions and desires, we're liable to focus on that possibility of getting away with it and miscalculate what really is in our own interest. When we're focused on the rare possibility of actually getting away with it, 
what we're neglecting is not just the greater likelihood of being caught, but the extremely high cost to us if we will get caught, namely an end to the Commonwealth being kicked out of this possibility of cooperative relationships. So, what it's rational to do is to, as it were, not rely on the judgment that we have on each particular occasion. Because we know, maybe at a higher order, we know that we're liable to make a mistake in calculating on those particular occasions. So if we know that we're liable to mistake, if we're liable to miscalculation and misjudgment, what we should do as a sort of higher order decision is not decide not to rely on our judgment on each particular case. And instead, adopt a blanket policy of what? Complying with the covenants that we make. Okay. So, um, so there is this, in, in this case, there, with this argument, there's a sense in which we are taking the judgment out of our own hands. There's a sense in which we're saying we should not rely on our own judgment on each particular occasion. But of course, there's another sense in which we're relying on a higher order judgment about well, when to rely on our judgment. That is, when to rely on our specific judgment of an individual case. So adopt a more general policy knowing that, well, knowing two things. Knowing that we are liable to make a mistake if we judge the individual case on its merits. But also notice, no, also acknowledging that we are giving up the possibility, rare though it may be, of getting away with it. The point is that we're not going to be in a position to judge when we would be able to get away with it. So there is some potential loss here, but this is, this is worth it. So here's my analogy. Um, this is called the Mueller-Liar illusion. Um, you've probably seen it before. Um, and the idea here is that um, uh, when you look at this line, this line, well, if you judge the um, length of those just by, as it were, looking, uh, I don't know, does, does it work? Which one looks longer to you? Um, the yeah. Same yeah, so it looks like this one is longer, but probably you've all.